Oh, the Jeep makes another appearance. Good stuff. Ah, Peru. It's been a long time since I stood here. Good old Peru. Uh, so, yeah, this is the very last level in the game, people. We've made it. Um, I'm waiting for a Jaguar. There he is. Maybe he'll stay over there for the time being. We've made it to the very last level of the game. Um, as I said in the last video, this level actually has nothing to do with the main story at all. It is just simply a bonus level um, that they included, and you can actually access it at any time as long as you have the money to buy the secret map. If you buy the secret map, this is the level you're immediately going to see as soon as you buy it. Um, but if you don't buy it, the game appears to just take you here after you beat the final level. So, we're in Peru, and this is actually a recreation of the Raiders of the Lost Ark opening intro, which is kind of cool. You'll see as we go through the level, you'll recognize some parts of the temple and stuff like that from the first movie. There's a raft in the jeep there that I just took. You're going to need it. Here's that cheetah running around. You're just going to have to scare it off again. A snake under here and some herbs. Um, you don't actually need health in this level because as you can see, once you get to this level, it, for whatever reason, I think just gives you 120 or something of each health item. So yeah, don't worry about dying in this game due to like physical damage because you're not going to. You have pretty much an unlimited amount of health kits. Uh, the only way you're going to die is obviously by falling off the, uh, a cliff or drowning. So the only way to go once you start this level is to get in this raft and swim down the river here. Uh, it may look like you can swim in this water, but you can't. Once you jump in the water, you immediately get eaten alive by piranhas and you lose. So there's no point. Uh, there's once again going to be a lot of sharp rocks here. Just like in Tian Shan River, I think this is the only other level that you use the raft in. So once again, I'm going to have to turn down the audio because that those rapids are going to be awful. But you're going to want to come to this second pool area here and just get out onto this platform right here. Sometimes it takes a little bit of jittering to do it. He often doesn't want to get out here for whatever reason. Just collision detection at work or whatever. Um, and you can dive into this water here. There's no fish in here to my knowledge. Because um, there's a rock blocking the entrance there. And you're just going to want to swim into this underwater cave here. And pull yourself out. Then we got a ladder. Take this to the top. And you're going to be kind of overlooking the river streams here. You can see a little bit further down the river. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to take this sliding slope down. And I jumped way too fucking early. And you're going to want to jump across the river there, but I jumped way too early on that attempt. So we'll make another attempt at it. Um, this level is pretty linear. There's not a whole lot of um, backtracking. I don't think there's much backtracking at all, actually. It's a pretty linear level, but it's actually it's got some pretty tricky jumps and pretty tricky puzzles to figure out. God damn it. Jumping way too early on this shit. Not taking my time. But I guess this is one of those said tricky jumps. They do a couple things on this level that they don't do in the other levels. It's designed, I guess, as like a final test, right? It's the bonus level. They make it hard for a reason. It's designed to test everything you've learned in the later games. There we go. Everything you've learned in the previous levels are going to be put to use here. So, it can be pretty tough. 
There aren't any armed enemies, though, in this level, um, so you don't have to worry about being shot at or anything, but there are quite a few traps that they've never used before that you're going to have to um, deal with, obviously. So that's the first treasure you just saw. That's literally the only reason we come in here is to get that first treasure, the gold idol. You can fall back into the water and climb out onto this little ledge if he wants to. Come on. You know you can. Oh, for God's sake. Come on. Is he going to make me climb back up? I swear you can climb onto this platform. I've seen it done before. I guess he just does not want to do it today. Okay, fine. I will go back and go out on the other side. Not a great start. Not a particularly great start. The game is being difficult. Attempt number four at this. Good stuff. There's a little platform. I suppose we can just jump to the platform from here too. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do. But anyway, you need to get back out to the main river. And we are going to continue going down the river. We only stopped in that little uh, pond, I guess, to get that first treasure of the level. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of sharp rocks here, but fortunately this is the only time you use the raft in the entire level. So it's not a huge deal if you hit some of the rocks. You probably will anyway, just because there's a lot of them. But even if you do, um, uh, even if you do, you don't really need to repair the raft because it's a short trip down to the end right here. I actually didn't lose anything. That's pretty good. And there's going to be a bank you can pull out on right here. And that's going to be the end of the raft for the rest of the level. So we're done with it. And uh, you may notice that this is actually the entrance of the temple from the first movie. Go up to this boulder. Still blocking the exit. I'm lucky I got out alive. So this is where Belloc sent all the Hovitos after us, was in this little area here. So obviously we can't get back into the temple that way, so we're going to have to find another way into the temple. You can look down here and there's just a skybox and vines and stuff like that. So we're going to have to dive back into the water. And you're going to see two entrances, one that's already open and one that's covered with vines. You're going to want to go into this left one covered with vines first. Make sure you do because once you go back, go into that right entranceway, you cannot get back again. It sucks you down a waterfall and you cannot get back out. There's a couple of uh, piranha in here. Barracuda. I believe these are supposed to be piranha. I think they're colored differently than the other fish we saw earlier in the game. Uh, there's nothing up here. This is just a pool to fall in if you miss a jump. So there's no point going up there. Uh, where you want to go is up this little passage here. And you're going to want to pull yourself out. Into this little cave area. There's another little platform across that you want to jump up to. Get up to the next one. And there is going to be a ladder here on your right. This ladder actually leads nowhere. It just leads to that open door you saw in the waterfall earlier. Shoot the snake right by your feet. Jesus Christ. Uh, the only place it leads is here. So this is, of course, the waterfall overlooking that first area we were in. Um, so I'm not sure why they put this here. I guess maybe just so you can get back to that section if you missed the treasure the first time. But that's all it's, it's there for. What you're actually supposed to do is turn around, jump across the chasm again. 
and take this pathway up here onto this ledge down here and you're gonna find your second treasure at the level a blue gem tucked in this thing's mouth um can we s I think there's a platform there we go and you can just get back into the water and swim your way out again the piranha might be nearby though No, nope, hasn't made it out. Okay. So once you get out here, you can swim down into this waterfall area here. There's going to be a couple more piranha down here in this series of caves and connecting pathways. Take them out if you want. There's the other one. Come on. Oh, you bitch. Oh, how did that went right through his body? Got him. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this area can be a little confusing when you first get in, but all of the pathways pretty much lead to the same areas. Um, oh shit, there's another one. Come on. Get your ass back here. Good. I also love how this waterfall, I think it's an audio glitch, it makes no noise once you fall into the water, even when you're directly underneath it. Quietest waterfall in existence. Okay. Oh, Jesus. So now we can continue on. Um, if you take this passageway to your left up here, you are going to find a Komodo dragon and a little small med pack. Um, that's all That's this is really up here for. Now what? You can't fit into that crawl space, so don't try. It's literally just for the small med kit, which you don't need anyway. But I'll just show you it's there, it exists. Uh, if you go out this way, you're going to find yourself in a very dark, almost seemingly bottomless pit of water. It's actually not bottomless. There is a floor there, but it's incredibly hard to see right now. So this isn't the way we need to go. The way you're meant to go is you're actually supposed to, and this is just an empty air pocket, there's nothing up here, you're actually supposed to go into this little space here down. Down on your, it'll be on your right when you first enter the area, and take that out here, and climb onto this little ledge, and someone's conveniently left a whipping post for us to get across this gap. And you're going to keep following it, and you're going to find yourself in this creepy chamber down here. With all the bloody skulls on the wall. Jesus, guys, pushing that rating. It's almost an M rating right there. Jesus Christ. And you want to light up this lamp, and this is going to light up the room. Oh my god, why are we invisible? Okay, good. And you can now see that there was a patch of vines in the floor below us. So that's where we're going to want to end up next. But before you do that, there's a treasure number three here, the silver idol. You can't get to it normally, so what you have to do is actually whip it into the water. Which again, like, I don't think there's... Weird role in place. I don't think there's ever another scenario in the game where you have to do that to collect the treasure. It's just something you wouldn't think about doing. And that's kind of what this level does, is it... It, it, it causes you to think about um, doing things, I guess, a different way than you normally would. So cut these vines, and it's going to take you down this really dark passageway into the next area. And there's a swirling vortex down there that's sucking all the water out of this room currently. So what you want to do is fill this room up with water so we can continue climbing up the vertical shaft there. So to do that, you're going to want to push this block onto the vortex. So it plugs the hole and fills this room up. And now we can start swimming up. There's nothing in this little cubby hole, however there is one. Get out of there. 
There is one in this second cubby hole right here. You're going to find treasure number four, a gold bar sitting in this little nook here in the wall. And now we can take this all the way back up to the top. And here's where you should start recognizing parts of the temple. This is actually, um, crawl out first. This is actually that gap that Indy swung across in the first movie, uh, where the branch broke and he had to climb his way out of it. Um, that's actually where we came from, was that pit that he would have fallen down. Uh, and as you can see here, here's actually the light trap from the first this movie. Looks familiar. Poor old forest off. And uh, an interesting thing is uh, if you actually roll through it, you'll actually see Cepito as well. So yeah, just nice references to the first movie. I don't know what the hell that was. Weird. That was like the clock from like the fourth level. And this uh, is actually the first boulder where the first boulder came from. This is the original entrance to the temple where he ran to escape the boulder and that's where the boulder is now. You're gonna see a ton of spiders here though because this is also that tunnel where all the spiders came from in the first movie. You'll probably get bit here because it's actually ridiculous the amount of spiders you need to kill. I think it's like 16. Oh, there's one right there. It just bit me right in the face. Dickhead. Thankfully, they give you tons of poison kits. Uh, you're going to want to crawl under here. And there's going to be a stone key waiting for you on the other side. Aha. Uh -huh. A strange key. Good stuff. And now we need to make our way back to where we came from. But there are going to be a fuck ton of spiders dropping on you. You can run past them if you want, but I think it's pretty cool to shoot all of them, just to see all the bodies line up. Because there are a lot of them. If you're an arachnophobe, this will not be a good part. And there's basically like no way you can escape this section without getting killed. They just keep coming. Is that all of them, or is there more? Might be all of them. I think if you hang around in this area a little longer, you'll get a ton more as well. Oh, there we go. They're triggered by running under the tunnel. Okay, I think that's all of them. Yeah, like as you can see, there's like 16 spiders there. You can probably just run past them though. Just make sure not to run in this light because the spikes will come out and kill you. It's not just for show. They will totally come out and murder your ass. So now we can get to this next part. And this is, of course, the part where he picks up the idol with the stone floor. And yes, if you step on the black squares, they will shoot darts at you. So you can choose to run through it like in the movie, or you can choose to kind of creep your way through if you want around the... Ah, oh, Jesus. Around these little black squares. Ow. And this is actually where he got the very first idol. I had that idol in my hand. Amazing. So this is, of course, where the first movie ended, but now that the whole thing has collapsed, we can see that there's actually another area behind the collapsed wall. Uh, before you put the key in the lock, you're going to want to inspect this little triangular hole. This might be important. Comment on the importance of it, and now you can stick the stone key in this little keyhole. And that's going to open up the floor phase. Um, and weirdly enough, he keeps the tool from beyond. I don't know why, but it's there. He keeps nothing else, none of his other machine parts. I guess we lost those in the last level, or in level 16, or is that 15? I don't know. 
I'm getting confused. But yeah, it's weird to me that he keeps the tool from beyond for whatever reason this level. Because it's totally useless. It doesn't do anything. There's nothing that requires you to use it. So this is a really dark cavern and you're going to get a lot of scorpions coming at you. That you cannot see, but they're there. God, is this dark. And there's also a couple of carnivorous centipedes in here as well. Um, okay, I don't think there's any more. No. Uh, and the centipedes, this is the only... Jesus. This is the only um, level that they're ever in in the game. I can hear him crawling around up there and down here. There's a lot of them. Another scorpion up there. Is that it? Shoot the centipedes. Okay. So, now once everything's dead, you can climb up on this little platform here. I still like lighting all the torches just because it looks cool. Uh, I believe there's a whipping post up here that you can climb up. And another thing to light. No. The lighter is not going to help you get up to that other platform. And now we can climb up to the top of this room. There's even another torch up here waiting for us. Good stuff. Okay. So now what you're going to want to do is jump across, grab this ledge, and shimmy your way down until you can climb up on this next platform here. You're going to come to this area here. Whoops. Okay. That looks a little too dangerous, even for me. So that boulder there um, is just hanging precariously, and we actually can't step on this floor, because as soon as we do, that boulder will come and crush us. So you can't go that way for now. What you're actually meant to do is back away from this ledge, drop down to the next one, and you're going to find the bam bamboo stick. What have we here? Hmm, this might be important. And now you can drop back down, back to the floor. And head back the way we came. And this pole is, as you guessed it, going to go into that little triangular hole we saw earlier up here. Bamboo spike. Well, that ought to do it. I'm going to stick that through on the other side, and that's going to provide us with a post that we can whip to climb up to that platform. So, back, just run off here. Make sure not to step on these, the floor again. Maybe that doesn't activate it. And there's a nice little crawl space we can fit through here. And we can now get up to the next section. Oh, you know what? I totally missed a treasure. Sorry. I'm going to have to go back to the, that other room. I totally missed a treasure. Sorry about that, guys. I wasn't paying attention. I totally missed a treasure in the last section there. I'll get it real quick. It doesn't take a very long time to get. I totally forgot it was there. Oh, right. This whipping post, isn't it? Okay. Can we get it from here? No, we cannot. Oh, yeah, we can. This is where we're supposed to be. 
So you're just supposed to drop off of this platform here, and you're gonna find treasure number five, the red Which gem is? in this guy's mouth again. Okay, so that's the treasure I missed. So now we can go back and deal with that bamboo pole again. Sorry about that, I totally forgot that that thing was there. But now you know. And now we're back on track. Look at that ass, that polygonal ass. Okay. So now we're back where we need to be. Jump off the whip. And you're gonna find yourself in a room with three chap squares. Uh, these faces with the skull, the skulls on them, obviously if you stand on them, they are going to drop you into a pit of spikes. So don't do that. Uh, this one we are going to jump past for now because there is a treasure we need to get in this next area. Again, it is very dark. But we need to continue climbing. Where, oh right, this part here. Perfect. Let's climb these platforms up here. It's going to give you a nice overview of an area we have yet to get to yet. Uh, but what we really want to do is jump across to this platform here. And light this up here. And you're going to find treasure number six, a blue gem. And now we can just drop down. And now that we have that treasure, we can stand on this last square. And that's going to drop us into the snake room. So there's a med kit here. First aid. Some snakes on the floor. Um, this room actually spawns unlimited snakes. You can't kill them all. You can sit here and shoot at them forever, but more will just keep coming. So it's best just to ignore them and keep going. To this platform here. We can swing our way across. And climb up this ladder. Yeah, you'll hear just all sorts of hissing down there the whole time you're in here, because they never stop. Climb up here, and what you're going to want to do is pull this block out of the way so we can reach the next set of ladders. Good stuff. And the first place you're going to want to go is actually not up here. You're going to want to take this ladder down because it's going to lead you to another treasure. Unfortunately, you have to climb up this ladder not once, but twice. And you actually have to do it three times if you want to access the Easter egg in this level. There is another Easter egg in this level, just like the last one, but this one is significantly harder to uh -huh. get to, unfortunately. Drop on in on our snake buddies again. Snakes are totally fucking useless in this game. I literally just landed on one's head and he didn't bite me. I don't think I've, I've ever been bitten by a snake on this run, ever. They're slow and they don't bite you almost ever. Spiders are probably the worst, followed closely by scorpions. Those bugs are annoying too, I guess, in the last two levels. They can be a bit of a pain in the ass, but there's not a whole lot of them, so it's okay. Ah, he's, it's nice to see he still hasn't figured out how to climb ladders consistently yet, even though we're on the last level of the game.
Left, left, up. And now instead of going down, we can take this ladder up to the next platform that we need to. Oh yeah, and we took, we got, I don't know if I mentioned it, you, you saw it anyway, but the green gem down there that we collected is treasure number seven. So what you're going to do, grab this. This is actually a really cool shot. Again, I think this is the only time in the game it does this, where it pans down so you can see just how high you are above the floor. It's a pretty cool effect. Uh, you're going to want to shimmy across, climb up on this part here, and you're going to reach this part of the platform. And this is actually a really good time to save your game, because this next jump can be incredibly difficult. Uh, what I find works the best is I, you want to back jump off of this platform. You're going to start sliding down. Oh, you dickhead. I jumped a little too late, I guess, because he bounced off the wall. I did make it. He just bounced off the wall to his death. I'll jump a little earlier this time. It's really hard to get the timing on this jump down properly. Oh, how did he not grab that? He was there. Jesus, this is gonna this is gonna add up my death count, isn't it? Like I said, there's some real tricky jumps in this level. No, quit jumping straight up. There we go. There we go. Got it. Thank God. And now we are over top of that floor piece that we were earlier. What you're going to want to do is jump to this ledge here. The boulder is going to get even a little bit closer. So you're going to want to drop and shimmy into this little part here. I might be able to whip that thing. And he'll give you a little hint that you're supposed to whip this eagle's head. And that's going to send the boulder smashing down to the floor. So now we can get down to the floor below. You're just going to want to back off and drop. She's a little high, but... Okay, um, so now is where we're going to get a big split in the path, depending on whether you want to see the Easter egg or not. Um, I'm going to be showing you the Easter egg next, obviously, but if you don't want to see the Easter egg, you're just, you're just going to want to climb up to this platform here. Just jump up to here and keep going forward. Um, once you pass that seal on the floor though, the door closes behind you and you can't get back. So if you want to see the Easter egg, you need to take this way out first. So if you don't want to see the Easter egg, I'll leave a little time annotation to skip ahead because it does take about five minutes to get to the Easter egg section. Uh, so I'll leave that on the screen here right for you now. Uh, but for those of you who do want to see it, I'm going to start back toward the Easter egg. So now that the boulder has fallen off of that platform it was on, you can actually get back to that section, and that's where we want to go, is we want to climb up on that ledge where the boulder used to be. So unfortunately, we have to go all the way back and do everything we did previously to get up to that position again. So we're going to have to go through the three trap squares. We're going to have to go through this whole snake room again. It's going to be wonderful. But that's what you have to do to get back to see this last secret of the game. There's actually no treasure in it. I suppose I should have mentioned that before. There's no treasure in this Easter egg at all. So if you just are going for the treasures you don't actually need to see this. It's just put in the game as a final challenge, I guess, for the really observant people to, to find and experience if they want. Okay, so we're gonna have to go back down into the snake room once again and complete that tricky part of jumps once again. Like I said, you have to do it three times at least if you want to see the Easter egg. So it's going to be a lot of fun. While I'm climbing my way back up there, I guess, I suppose I could... What could I talk about? 
we've kind of reached the end of the game, so I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. Um, like I said, I really enjoy this game. It, it isn't very well known, unfortunately. It, it should be known a lot better than it is. But it, it very often gets overshadowed by the Tomb Raider series as they were coming out at the same time. And this is an obvious reskin of that game. But I think the story in this one is incredibly good. The environments are incredibly good. And I actually do like this game better than any of the original Tomb Raiders anyway. Like 1 to 5, I believe. And it's definitely worth checking out if you are fans of that series or just fans of adventure games in general. It's a very good one. Shimmy our way across. I can still see that snake down there. It wants a piece. Okay. I better see it here again because I'm probably going to fall to my death a couple times. Hot down it. Nice! We got lucky. Okay, so this is where you want to get back to experience that secret. And as you can see, the boulder has left its position up here. So now we can get back into this area. You're going to find some I medicinal have. herbs, even though against the you don't herbs. need them. And there's this weird circular symbol on the wall. I don't think it has anything to do with the Easter egg. I think it's just kind of a a marker to show you that something's here. And you're going to want to come into this area here and you're going to see these four chickens on the wall. And you're going to want to play them in a certain order so that they all light up. Is this one next? There we go. I'm not sure I recognize that tune. It's supposed to be recognizable, but I don't recognize it. If anyone knows what that tune is, let me know. But once they're all lit up, this door opens and you are going to find yourself in well, this well. room here. Look at this. So I believe this is a reference to Encounters of the Third Kind. I've never actually seen the movie, so I'm not sure if it is, but that's what I've been told. Uh, you're going to have this big island in the room with, I think that's supposed to be a volcano coming out of it, and apparently this room is featured in the movie. Uh, you're, actually, you're also going to find three trauma kits on the table. What's this? Once again, pay. useless at this point in the game, but whatever. I think that's supposed to be a director's chair. I, I, I'm going to guess that Spielberg probably directed the movie or maybe George Lucas. I honestly know nothing about the movie. I've never seen it before. So I imagine that is why it's it's in this game. You can look out and you see kind of like a sun or a star out of the window. And I'm sure that has something to do with the movie, but I don't know. I'll maybe have to watch the movie after I finish this game. But yeah, this is the final Easter egg in the game. It takes a lot of effort to get to, but this is what you'll experience if you find it. So yeah, uh, there's no treasures in here, just those three trauma kits. Once you've looked around for a while, you can go back to the main shaft, and we can just drop down to the floor again using the exact same method we used last time. So that was a nice little detour that we took. And now we can continue on with the main story, and the main path. So you're going to want to climb up here to the main pathway and run across this seal here. And what that's going to do is it's going to close the door. Or it will once this, this secret, or this air secret. It will once you jump to this next platform. Before you jump to that next platform, though, what you're going to want to do is hang off of this edge here. Drop down, and you're going to find, after climbing this ladder, treasure number eight. I believe a silver bar. Sitting on a pedestal up I here. Find? Since you can't get back the way you came, you're just going to want to jump up here and fall through this hole, and that's going to drop you right back to where we were. 
Okay, this is also a good place to save. What you need to do is you need to make a series of tricky jumps uh, across the shaft to that last platform there. But once you jump to the second platform, the walls are going to start closing in on you. So you got to do it really fast. There's really no time to line up your jumps incredibly well. Jesus. And the thing is, everything's at an angle, so it, it's pretty tough to line up your jumps properly. And you're just going to want to jump in here, and you can see all of these have closed on us now. And what that's done is it's made us a staircase up to the next part, uh, part of this level here. So jump onto this one here. I actually really like to quick save after making each of these jumps, because they can be really tough to make, because you're jumping at an angle to where the flat edge is. So sometimes the game, if it really wants to be a bastard to you, it, you'll just bounce off because the collision detection isn't great. Once you get here, you're going to want to slash these vines. Don't fall down there. That's just an endless bottomless pit. And you're going to want to jump across and find uh -huh. treasure number nine, another silver bar. You're actually getting very close to the end of the level. So just continue your climb up to the opening that you can see there. Jesus, that was, that was tight. Nice. Game was nice to me for once. Come in here and you're going to, uh, after this, they all slide back to where they are so you can't get back down to where you were before. And we are going to encounter the second idol of the temple. Another idol. Get this one. Amazing. Uh -oh. Good stuff. So this is actually your tenth and final treasure of the level. It counts towards your final treasure count. As soon as you take this, the room is going to start collapsing. So you're going to want to run out the open door. I sense a trap. So just head for this open door before everything starts blowing apart on you. Fairly simple. You can watch the room fall apart behind you. So we're not going back that way. <laughs> what the fuck? I like that little backward shimmy he did. Weird. Okay. You can see that there is actually a boulder in front of us, though, I believe, or it will be coming for us. So you want to turn around and run back underneath this ramp here and just watch it go over you. And as soon as it rolls over you, this floor is going to start collapsing as well. So you're going to want to run for your life. There's going to be another boulder escape scene because, of course, they had to do it. Slide down the slope here. Whip across this other gap, just like in the movie. And run your ass off to this section here. You can see a whipping post above us. And you're going to want to whip it and climb as high as you can go to avoid the boulder crushing you. There we go, and we are back out where our jeep is. And that's the end of the game. I still can't speak Ovidos, but this time I guess it won't matter. Good stuff. And that's it. There's our final line. Um, and you get the credit sequence. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed the Let's Play of this game. It took a while. It's been like five months, I think, to get through this, but I had a good time. I still think this is a really good game. I had a great time going through it again. Like I mentioned before, um, I do prefer this over the original Tomb Raiders, but unfortunately I believe it gets overlooked a lot because of the original Tomb Raiders. Um, you can find it on PC, also there's an N64 port, but I think that's definitely going to be harder to get now that the PC version is available on both Steam and GOG. Um, so yeah, if you really like the, the game, pick it up. Um, it's really great if you want to play through it yourself. Uh, if you were just using this as a walkthrough, I hope it helped you out a lot. I hope you 
found all the treasures and we're able to get through it without too much hassle. And you can go through all these lovely testing scenes. International tester, Chip Hindenburg. Wendy Cupcake Kaplan. I wonder if any of these people still work in the game industry. This game is over 20 years old now at this point. I wonder if any of them are still left. Be interesting to look up. Jack Sorensen. Carrie Chilina. Chilini. Tom McCarthy. Business affairs. But yeah, um, so yeah, once again, you guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed everything. Look forward to my Let's Play. Um, I have another game in mind that I'm going to start next weekend. And it's very different to this game. Um, and it's actually a newer game. Uh, you can see him whip the shit. Good stuff. And that's it. So yeah, um, I'm going to start a Let's Play of a different game next weekend. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I want it to be a surprise. But uh, it's very different from this game. And it is much more modern than any of the games I've, I've previously played. Um, not to say it's brand new. It's still about a 10-year-old game. At this point, I think it's about 10 years old. But um, it's, it's, it's graphically very good looking still. And I think I'll have a really good time on it. Um, I, hopefully you guys will have a really good time on it too. But it's a very different game from anything else that I've played on the channel so far. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching you guys. Really hope you enjoyed the past 17 levels or so. God, I wonder how long the playlist for this thing is going to be. Probably like 9, 10 hours I would assume. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you next time uh, when I begin my next Let's Play. Go out and buy the game if you really enjoyed it. It's a really good game. Thanks. <laughs>